These are my hand-welted, hand-lasted, hand-sold, grass-fed, dairy-free, tax-evasive, $500 Balmoral Oxfords. Beautiful, aren't they? Wait a minute. What's going on there? Now that the edges are torn up after just a few weeks of wear, I will look less like the proud owner of these wonderful shoes and more like the homeless wombat that mugged the CEO of Morgan Stanley to acquire them. But how can you instead be smart enough to simply maintain your sole edges so that they not only look brand new, but even better? Follow me through just five simple steps that anyone can do to achieve shining, beautiful sole edges that will crush your enemies and conquer their kingdoms. Anytime you apply any kind of product to your shoe, you want to be sure the surface is free of any loose dirt, dust, or debris so it does not get embedded into the leather or trapped under any layers of product. Simply take a lightly damp cotton cloth and firmly clean the entirety of the sole edge and heel block, switching to clean sections of the cloth as needed. Step two. Now we need to restore the color to the edge. And for this, you'll need leather dye. Phoebings is great and only about 10 bucks on Amazon. You can use just about anything to apply leather dye, though I like to use these little daubers I got for a couple bucks at a fabric store. This will stain anything and everything almost permanently, so be cognizant of your table, clothing, and the shoe itself. Here's my setup. I like to use a small glass into which I squeeze a little bit of dye using the dauber like a sponge. This gives me A, a small yet stable container with just enough dye as opposed to an open bottle asking to be knocked over and destroy everything. B, control over how much dye I am applying as I can squeeze out dye from the dauber by pressing it against the sides of the glass. And C, a place to leave the dauber when not actively in use. And don't worry about the glass, I'll show you how to clean it later. I like to have a few paper towels handy just for safety, but that is basically it. When opening an existing container of leather dye, always do so over a cloth or paper towel. Over time, dye can dry in the threads of the lid, causing flakes to break off outside the jar when opening. Even though they're dry, these flakes will stain something if they're rubbed against it. Soak the dauber in the liquid, then being careful not to drip, move it over to your glass cup and rub it around the sides to squeeze out the liquid. You don't need much and can always add more. Repeating this just two or three times should yield more than enough liquid for one or two pairs. Immediately close the lid on the die and put it aside. Before application, squeeze out the dauber once more. You don't want this to be saturated. If you are anxious at all about it dripping, you have way too much. You should be able to give it a good shake without worry of any dye flying off. When applying, I like to keep the shoe braced against the table for stability. Gently wipe the dauber along the sole edge. You should only need two or three coats to fully restore that rich color. Try to be even in your coats, but don't worry too much about it. You can see here my brush strokes are overlapping and nonchalant. As long as you don't apply five layers in one spot and one in another, the difference won't be noticeable. While I'm at it, I like to flip the shoe upside down and do the underside edge as well, just to extend that color a little further. You can also dye the heel block in the same way. Don't worry about getting dye on the rubber top lift. In my experience, this doesn't cause any problems. And that's it for dyeing. To clean up, use a folded up paper towel to squeeze out the dauber of any excess dye, then leave it out overnight to fully dry before storing. As for the glass cup, simply rinse with isopropyl alcohol until clean. This will get it 90% there, though if you wanted to fully clean it, fill it with alcohol to soak overnight. As for the shoes, they may be dry to the touch, but are not dry fully, and the color will still bleed on anything they come in contact with. Put them on a paper towel to dry overnight in the open before proceeding. Okay. That's it for the hardest part. Now we're on to the fun stuff. It's time to wax. Choose your choice of wax in a matching color. I like to use Saphir Medaille Dior because it gets a little more liquid than other waxes. This allows it to more deeply penetrate the pores of the leather, providing better sealant and waterproofing. Depending on the level of wear on the edge, apply one or two layers evenly around the shoe using your fingers. Don't apply more than two or worry about flattening any roughness. That's for our next step. This is simply to prime the leather with wax that will embed itself as we iron.
which is our next step. Allow the shoes to dry for a few minutes, then use this. This is a sole edge iron. This is based off an actual tool cord wainers use for this very purpose, though those tools tend to be more expensive and require more skill to use. This is a more consumer friendly riff on the tool made by Paul Brungard, a Swedish shoe care company. It's simple, it's easy to use, you can probably figure it out on your own, but here's a few tips. If your iron is new, first rub a layer of wax on it just to seal, smooth, and lubricate the wood. I like to start by addressing the corner of the sole edge. Couch that corner into the corresponding groove of the iron and with firm pressure, ride the tool up and down along the edge. You'll notice immediately this compresses, rounds, and restores the edge of the leather. Next, angle the tool upwards so it's pressed against the flat of the edge and do the same. Because sole edges will vary in their size and angle from shoe to shoe, it won't always work out perfectly that the iron will cover the entire edge while couched in that groove. You may need to choke down on the tool to get full coverage. As far as pressure goes, think about it in levels. You can start off pretty firm, but just do a good once over first. Then you can get progressively more intense. And remember, this stuff is hard, dry leather. You will need to press much harder than you think you do to get that full compression. Don't be afraid to do so. You can only kind of treat the heel block with this tool, though that's not a huge deal as most of the deterioration will be on the edge itself. And if you have very pointed round toe shoes that are hard to get with this end, you can use the other end made for this exact reason. Lastly, you'll notice this process doesn't feel very smooth and the edge won't look pretty. It's normal to feel a lot of drag when you're applying proper force with the iron and it'll leave some streaking on the edge, but don't worry about this, we'll clean it up in the last step. Your main focus here is on physically flattening that edge and compressing the leather as much as possible, regardless of how it looks. Now we shine. This is not just the last step, but also the fun part. Apply one or two layers of wax and give it a couple minutes to dry, just like before. From here, you have two options. You could very simply and easily brush the whole edge firmly with a horsehair brush, which will produce a soft shine that will be the same as, if not better, than brand new. Or, if you wanted a real mirror shine, you could, well, mirror shine it. Using a soft cotton cloth, wax, and cold water, you can mirror shine your sole edge and heel block the same way as you would your toe cap. You may not be able to get the perfect glassy surface, or glissage, as it's referred to, that you can on your toe, but you will be able to get it notably reflective. Now, instead of looking like the rabid mongoose that beat the dishwasher packets out of Jamie Dimon, you look like the esteemed CEO him very self. But that is just one facet of a good and proper shoe care routine. There is much more to know if you want to keep your stitched leather footwear looking shining and glorious. Whether you are the proud owner of $200 shoes or $2,000 shoes, all the information you need to know about shoe care is in my ultimate guide to every level of shoe care right here.